Okay, excellent. Hi, everyone. It's me, Nigel. I'm here at Sister Wigs Broadcast Headquarters, and uh, all is going well. We're, well, of course, not all is going well. Wouldn't be a Sister Wigs Broadcast without some sort of technical difficulty, and Heather is here to help out. Hi. Hi. I'll pop over. Watch here. this. Hello. See? Okay. Can't hear a damn thing. Well, that's because, okay, so let's take this out. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so you still can't hear anything. No. All right. You keep talking. Right. We'll figure this out. Marvelous. All right. Okay, folks. So a lot of stuff going on in the last two weeks. So uh, let's let's talk about that, shall we? Okay. You heard Heather, uh, who is a big smart <laughs> person, and I'm Nigel Destroyer, and chief executive barbarian. There's a thing on there that should say on mute. It's out the way. Shameless self-promotion achieved. Excellent. Okay. Um, so let's see who we've got on. I here. see we've mute. Shelly. Hi, Shelly. Unmute. Already okay, make sure it is unmuted. Hi, Liz. We've it was already unmuted. Daisy's right. hair garden. Hello, Jen. We've got... Now, testing the microphone. We've got Tina. Hi, Tina. Good to see you again. And Cheryl's here. Hello, Cheryl. Ah, uh, yes. Excellent. Okay, <clears throat> we're caught up with all the hellos so far. Good stuff. Good stuff. Now... We are going to talk about quite a few things, but first off, a heads up, our uh, our live streams are usually a bit on the tipsy side. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. Perhaps Hi, Sport Cam would have. <laughs> Heather's back. And uh, so we're going to be mixing up a cocktail here shortly. Um, I posted the ingredients on uh, both Patreon and the YouTube channel community tab. Uh, okay couple days in advance, uh, just so we could um, da, da, da. Start to give you enough time to get the da, da, da. ingredients yourself. And uh, we'll mix that up together then, shall we? Excellent. But that's a warning, so there might be some, um, might be some adult content in, you know, a couple of flares, nothing spectacular. Let's see. Kristen says hi. Hi, Kristen. Howdy, howdy. I'm trying to help him hear me so that way uh, I can I can be downstairs. Yeah, because we've got a fun little extra thing planned, which is yes, why. Yes, it's kind of a surprise, uh, but it's that, definitely. Testing. One, two, three. On that. No. Yeah. Here, you keep talking. I'm going to click. Okay. This is fun. Yeah. Hi. Hello. How you doing? I can't really bend over you, so. Oh. Uh, so I'll, I'll sit here. I'm going to talk about that, too, for a second. Hi, everybody. Here, let me. Uh... Yeah, put on the slides so people can know what I'm wearing. Okay. Eventually. <laughs> He's using one of my old um, iMacs, so it's kind of like a new thing for him. Right. See oh, what I mean? Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. And this iMac has always had good audio, and for some reason, it's not allowing him to actually hear me. So you keep keep doing your thing, honey. Grab a chair. Right. So yeah. spell. Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw some folks in here um, that I recognize. Saw Wig Daisy in here. By the way, Wig Daisy, excellent job. Yes, up, indeed, Jen. Upping your game on your videos. You should check out her videos, everybody. They, they are spectacular. She's, she's, she took some notes um, from me and from other people that are part of our affiliate <laughs> program, and she really ran with that. Like her videos started off being kind of like uh, hard, hard to focus. You know, like because it was like uh, the camera. You know what I mean. And whatever she's done, she's like invested in her background and she's got a better camera and it's just, it's awesome what she's doing now. So big, big props to Jen at uh, Wig Daisy's Hair Garden. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Oh, okay. So internal microphone. We like, we like that, right? Or, yeah. Or were you using this one? No, I was not using okay. that one. Okay. And then uh, let's say output. What are we doing here? This oh. is literally the first Hello. 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 Let's see if that works. Oh, Yes, we've got we've got stuff. All right, hold on. Let me go. John is actually part of this live stream too, so I'm gonna yeah. go see if John can say stuff. Can you say stuff, John? I hear you making noise, so that's sufficient. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm gonna head downstairs so we can get to that part of things. So here's Nigel again. Yeah. Thank you, honey. Thank you. Let's see. Here. It helps when you have uh, you're married to tech support, right? Yeah. Ah! Let me see if I, uh, where'd the now where'd my there it is. Had to find um, gotta find my earphones. Right. Let's try this again. Mm -hmm. 
Do you need any help? Okay. Right, someone say something. Yeah, hey, I can hear stuff in my earpiece. Okay, we're getting oh. 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 Who's new? Beauty from within. Hello. Hello. That's cool. I can hear her. He's never died in Easter. Yes, you can. We'll get to that. I don't think you realize that it's a requirement of If it's not one thing and it's another, bear and right, Kathleen. I think this is providing the best thing yes. Serena Del Mar, hey, just home recovering from the side effects of the shingles vaccine. I'm still here though. Oh, sorry to hear that, my dear. That must be a pain in the well, not not in the neck, say, but yeah, I can, I can sympathize with That's you. fine. If you want one, go ahead and grab one. I'm ready for another camera upgrade. Yeah, of course, I'll need help with yeah, this stuff to the table. We're not going to work on it right away. It's race race in the... Uh, want to get the it there. Media influencer. So we want it done fizzing. Theater of war. We can do that. Who else we got? Let's see. Yeah. I'll let you bring the, okay, the excellent. last... I feel like I'm in a conference call. <laughs> we just sit in the prison towel. That isn't it. All righty. Let's see All what right. we've got here. Where we're Would it be acceptable to begin that now? Yeah, please. We're nearly there. And, uh, right. So, so, where are we here? Let's get to the drink of the week, shall we? Boom, boom. Now, we've done this before. Uh, and like I said, I, I gave advance warning. So, hey, here's Heather. Yeah, you can still hear me, right? Yeah. Yay. So, anyway, there we go. So anyway, yeah, I, I put the ingredients on Patreon and our community tab a couple days in advance in case you folks want to buy the ingredients or make sure you had the ingredients in time to mix it with us. So Bumbo, this is a lovely rum cocktail, nice piratical drink, a little short glass in here. And first off, you take some spices. I'm using cinnamon. A little dusting of cinnamon in the bottom there. And all of these just going to be a little dusting of this stuff because you don't really want too much, especially for if you've already got spiced rum and uh, a little bit of nutmeg. 500 miles away in a cabin in the woods, John Townsend's ears perk up. <laughs> it's getting a bit stuck. I think that, there we go. Okay. And mm, a little bit of mace. Just a little, little tiny dusting. There we go. And a little bit of allspice. Do, 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 do. Tiny, tiny amount of allspice. That's you know, probably enough. And a little tiny smidge of cloves. And yeah, if you've got, say, pumpkin spice hanging around, and no pies to make with them, that'll do just as well, because that's pretty much all that's in pumpkin spice, as well as you know, a bunch of sugar. So little, don't even need much cloves, just a little tiny, tiny, tiny smidgiest smidge. And then once you've got all your spices put in, there you go, okay, spices, the spice must flow. You need some form of sugar. Now you can use white sugar, and that's perfectly fine. But I honestly think it's more culturally accurate to use brown sugar. So I'm going to take a spoonful of brown sugar. A spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down, helps the medicine go down way in the most delightful way. <sighs> yeah, I know you can sing the spoon, you can sing Mary Poppins, spoonful of sugar to the Imperial March, which foreshadows a whole lot, I think. All right, boom full of sugar. No, that's hard, that's rock hard. Okay, well, no worries, it's gonna be dissolved with some rum. Are, are you just contemptuous of Mary Poppins because of Dick Van Dyke's accent? That's not the whole thing, but that's a good part. <laughs> also, also the way Disney took it and just messed with it against the author's wishes and then made a movie about me about how the author kicked up a stink about it and then made her out to be the bad guy yeah you know bitter oh just a tad okay <laughs> and rum i'm using sailor jerry's you can use any rum you like 
can use white rum, you can use dark rum, golden rum, spiced rum, just sort of fill that to about there. That's a goodly amount. And just give it a little stir to mix things up, dissolve the sugar a little bit. Because no matter what, you know, even if you keep the spoon in this to continually mix it up, you're going to end up with a slurry in the bottom of this. But it's delicious. So, and once you've done that, you just need some chilled water. Got a big old jug of chilled water. And then take that and you just top it up. There you go. That's bumbo. Spices, sugar, rum, water, simple, and very, very easy, and delicious. I can't just, remember. Just so you know, honey, I converted the banner to be a scrolly thing so people can see it and also see what you're doing. Oh, excellent. Good idea. All right, so stir that up, take a taste. Hot diggity daffodil. <laughs> I like that. All right. All right. Well, well, while you uh, get settled in with your bamboo and take a couple sips and, and relax, can I talk about what uh, John and I are doing down here? Well, I was just going to um, get some comments, uh, uh, but we can do that. Sure. Because we can always get comments after in just a second. Sure. Yeah. Off so, we go then. Okay. So, what John and I are doing um, is we are doing neon tie dye Easter eggs. We're not going to use the little wrappy thing because I can't really stand that well right now, but we're going to do the little tie dye thing and see if it actually works. So what John is doing right now is he's added the vinegar. So down here, it smells awful. <laughs> We've got the window open and everything, but uh, yeah, we're waiting to, to, for these to dissolve so we can um, do this because it's this whole thing. Like it comes with these little cloths, like it's felt. It, co it comes with this, like, uh, these droppers that you're supposed to use. And it, do you have the little uh, plastic? Oh, they're right here. That's a little far for me to reach. But um, they, you're supposed to, like, put them in here. I'll show you the whole process when we were attempting it so you can see how successful we are or are not. Oh, my, that's flimsy. But uh, it's you're supposed to, like, drop. You see the holes? We're supposed to drop the dye in the holes to create, like, tie-dyed swirls. So we're going to try doing that down here. Um, while, while Nigel is doing the bulk of the live stream, uh, and I'm probably going to wear gloves because otherwise I'm, I'm going to end up with tie dyed hands. You know it. If you've ever dyed Easter eggs with kids, you know it. So happy Easter, everybody. Yes, happy Easter. Easter. This is our Easter, uh, live stream. You can see that, uh, Nigel's being thematic. He's got his tie dye on because it's you a tie dye. Pink Floyd rainbow thing there. I do, because I didn't want to actually like get dye on any of my like tie dye, because I realized all of my tie dye shirts have like a light um, base, and I was like, oh no, I'll destroy them. But this one, if I get dye on it, eh, whatever. The joke's still funny. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna keep prepping down here. Um, I'm and I'm gonna go off camera for just a couple minutes uh, to help not, uh, not Nigel, help John oh. prep while you uh, do your thing. So go ahead and take some comments, honey. I'm gonna mute myself and. All righty, my sweet. See you in a little bit. All righty, let us take some comments then. Huzzah. Right, where are we here? Do, 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 do. Right. Terry says hi, everyone. Hi, Terry. Serena says, paint everywhere and tired as hell. My poor wife has been laid up in, on the sectional all day. Oh, you both got it at once, did you? Yeah, getting two people. Yeah, I, we've been there. Two people getting a vaccination at the same time and one being laid out while the other is also in discomfort. Yeah, been there, done that, can sympathize completely. So yeah, ah yeah, she got hers too. All right, Sean! Sean is here! Hi, Sean! Sean says, hi, Nigel and Heather, haven't seen you for a while, looking good, both of you. Thank you, my dear, thank you. Hope all is well on your end in Torquay. Yeah, we've been puttering along, puttering along. Um, just uh, just taking the last two weeks off to, uh, to get our ducks in a row, so to speak. We got a few things going on behind the scenes. Um, we hope to have more news on that uh, later. Uh, not partial, some of it during this 
uh, live stream and some of it a little further down the road as we get more stuff in a, in in order. But uh, yes, great to see you, Sean, and uh, a drink to you for the boom boom. Good. I'm glad you can hear everything John and Heather are saying. And yes, the Pink Freud t-shirt. That's a good one. We got a lot of those. Whoops. Where'd that go? Brown sugar. Love that. Idea. Yeah, I, th I think that that's the most appropriate version because white sugar. I mean, white sugar could go well for um, because it's supposed to be ultra refined and ultra expensive and ultra hoity toity back in the day. But uh, I think the pirates would more just sort of use brown sugar because it was cheaper and easier to get hold of. I use dark sugar when I make pecan pie. Oh, I love pecan pie. And Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Hi from North Bucks in the UK. Excellent. Good stuff. Thanks for joining us. What? I mean, what must be what? Quarter past 11 where you are? Thanks. Thanks for staying up and keeping it, and uh, keeping us company. Same goes for you, Sean, because I just realized, you know, five-hour time difference. Uh, let's see. To say nothing of how elegant and ascendant the original books are destroyed by the Disney version. Hated that movie. Yeah, a little something about uh, a little something about the way Disney carries stuff out that uh, kind of rubs me the wrong way sometimes. Raw sugar, yeah, good stuff. Stacy, hi, Stacy. Stacy's with us. Who else we got here? Um, sounds like a hot toddy. It does rather, but uh, it's room temperature, you know, or you know, cold if if you uh, if you add the, the the chilled water. And I quite like this. Because, I mean, it's, I know it's spring down here, but as you can see by my, the way my hair is going wild, it's already humid and quite warm, which is why I occasionally dab my fevered brow with a, a paper towel because it's quite, quite warm up here. Susan Ferguson says, hi, everyone. Hello, Susan. Whoops. And Sean says, what sort of lightweight pirate are you watering down your rum? Well, that's 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 the thing, Sean, because bamboo is a diluted drink because you don't want to get too drunk when you're, you know, hauling on ropes and all that sort of thing. But also because, um, well, Heather's uh, since Heather's had her um, her uh, her stomach surgery, uh, her, her gastric sleeve surgery, uh, raw alcohol is kind of hard on on her uh, on her stomach. So most of these drinks are diluted. Uh, for her taste, and uh, if you want to go full on and not dilute them, that's okay too. In fact, that's the way I prefer it. But this is for the uh, um, this is for the uh, gastric sleeve crowd, the VSG bunch. Let's see. Liz says, "Happy Easter and Passover, all." Yes, indeedy. Yes, indeedy. That's why we're doing the uh, egg dyeing stuff today. Happy Easter, everybody. Excellent. Thank you, Tina. Happy Easter. Yay. Make sure you said Ella was in here with us because Ella has my bunny Valentine. And oh yeah. Yeah. And she signed up to be an affiliate, by the way. I saw that when I was approving people oh, excellent. yesterday. So that's really cool. I, I hope cool. I hope there's a lot of success with that. So I always think of her whenever people mention bunnies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because we've, we've still got that bunny speaker she sent us. Fun I bun. love that bunny. Like, uh, Nigel named the bunny Fun Bun. Yeah, Ella sent us, Ella sent us a bunch of um, bunny stuff. We did it, and we covered it in a live stream a, uh, a, a while back. Uh, we've had it for a while, but a lot of bunny-themed um, uh, bunny merchandise. We've got, like, uh, little squeezy uh, stress relief bunnies and uh, stickers, and we've got this really cool little bunny-shaped speaker. Which cut, which changes colors with the uh, um, music that goes through it, or you could put it on with a, a slow change, like a mood light or whatever. Like that's very cool stuff. MyBunnyValentine.com, I believe it's called. Um, but yeah, let's see. Uh, Jen says I didn't plan very well for Easter. I have three dozen eggs, but they're all brown eggs. Yeah, well, so what? Eggs is eggs. Yeah, and I've seen people do cool things with the brown eggs, and I think they use vinegar or something like that to like mm. make like little lacy lattice thingies on brown eggs. I've never tried it, but it always looks cool. Mm, good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, yes, Kathleen. We're going to see Sorrel. We'll get to that he's, very he's soon. He's been practicing with her. Yeah. Sarah says, hello from Wales. Hello, Sarah in hello, Wales. Sarah. Good. Hey, hey, Sean, who was in her in here earlier, her family's from Wales, if I recall correctly, uh, originally. 
Okay, I think we've caught up with all the comments. All right, well, can I take over again for just a moment to tell people, um, show people the other view, like with... with yeah, well, off you go, my speed, off you go. This camera, so I could show people what we're actually doing. Yeah. <laughs> all right, cool. Um, so, this one's on a tripod, so I'm going to get this a little bit closer. Can you take yourself off for a moment? Me? Honey? Yeah, one oh, second. Uh, wide screen. There we go. So there's John. Say hi, John. Hi, John. There's John. And then you can see our table with our eggs. We've got gloves that I dropped, and he's going to have to help me pick up. My apologies, John. That's why he's here. He's here to help out. We've got all this delightfully stinky vinegar dye stuff going on. And in fact, I might just pick this up and hold it for a moment so I can really show you how what's going on. What's going on? So you can see here we've got blue, green, another blue, a, a yellow, a pink, and an orange. We've got our eggs boiled and ready to go. We've got this whole apparatus, so we're going to be playing with that. I also wanted to talk really briefly, um, and let me change mics for a second. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. So um, uh, I wanted to show you our living room a little bit too, because one of the things that happened during the last two weeks and why I took time off and why I'm standing because it's more comfortable um, is that I actually had um, a tummy tuck. I finally bit the bullet and had some of my skin removed because, right? And my logic here was that the tummy tuck is gonna be the hardest to recover from. So I might as well do it first, get it over with because uh, it's, it's no joke. It is a brutal, brutal surgery. If, if you, the name sounds euphemistically cute compared to what it actually is. So I don't want to talk about it too much here, but if, if you are interested in me making a video at some point where I talk about what this was actually like and what the recovery is like, I'd be happy to share that information. Um, but I don't want to go into too much detail here because it's, it's a lot. Um, but you can see I'm sleeping on an armchair and I'm sleeping on a puppy pad on the armchair. Uh, whenever I sit in a chair, there is usually a puppy pad involved. There's also this guy, Asparagus. This is Asparagus the frog. I'm trying to get him on here, but it's hard to hold this and frog at the same time. So this is Asparagus. I literally hold him up against my abdomen whenever I feel like I need to cough. Uh, and he helps out with that. And then uh, this is actually where Nigel's been sleeping. Because my husband's amazing. He's been, he doesn't have to sleep out here. I didn't ask him to sleep out here, but he sleeps in the living room with me every night just to make sure I'm okay. And he, he like tucks me in and stuff. It's, it's very, very sweet. Um, and then we bought this desk so that way um, I could work um, with the, uh, the laptop here. Um, and this is, this is great because it's like a little rolly desk that goes over the chair. Um, and I am not partaking in the bamboo, obviously, because um, I'm on uh, pain medication. Not, I'm off of the hardcore stuff. I've been trying to wean myself off of that stuff kind of early because it makes me itchy and I'm not a big fan. I've already talked about that a ton. But uh, the sooner I can get off of opioid pain meds, the better, in my opinion. So um, I'm using um, just regular old ibuprofen, which is tricky. Um, I mix it with this stuff, Arnica Montana, which my plastic surgeon recommended. And that's what I am using for pain relief. Um, and at night I take a gabapentin. Um, but because, because of the fact that I'm taking all this ibuprofen and it's already really hard on my sleeve and stuff. Eh. Plus, one thing they don't tell you right away um, when you are planning these kinds of surgeries is that, like, you puff up real bad. Like, I am super... Um, here. Hi, I, I am uh, super duper puffy. Like I feel like really, really um, like uh, bloated, I guess is the best word to put it, uh, best way to say it. Cause I mean, even though I've got um, a binder on and stuff like that, I, uh, it's just, it's a really big surgery. Can you help me pick this stuff up, honey? Of course. Um, it's a really big surgery. And so you just end up swelling a ton afterwards. Like I can't even get my wedding ring on right now and I never take it off. So it's kind of annoying. I want to put it back on like now I feel like without it, you know, but, um, 
I wanted to talk about that because that's mm -hmm. kind of why I'm down here. It's why it's more comfortable for me to sit down here than it is <laughs> to be upstairs. Um, and once the bloating goes down and I've healed and stuff, I'll be happy to show off what it looks like. But right now I, I, I feel like I'm very potato and boxy <laughs> shaped. I'm shaped like one of these eggs because I've got all this binding and stuff going on. Um, and I wanted to also uh, talk to you a little bit about uh, this up front because I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen a little bit over here. Um, hold on, I got a slide for everything. Boop, 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 boop. Hi. <laughs> so uh, one of the things that we're doing right now is I'm running a deal on Patreon and I wanted you to know that the money that was used for my, my skin removal surgery has literally nothing at all to do with uh, th this Patreon thing, um, because I wanna show you what I've actually been using the Patreon fundraiser money for right now, um, because we're running a really great deal in Patreon. And that's that if you sign up at the $50 level or higher, well, I'll send you any wig or topper at Hair Kitty Kitty of your choice. Um, you just need, need to sign up for a whole month at the $50 level or, or above and we'll hook you up with that. Um, but my hope is, is that if you take advantage of that, you will share photos, please, share reviews, that kind of thing. That's that's one of the reasons why we're doing this is because I, I want to make it easier for you to get access to these products so you can help spread the word about them a little bit. Um, but not only that, um, I'm using it to buy equipment and it that money is literally going for just equipment. And I wanna show you what I've gotten so far with that. Um, yeah, I'm buying snazzy new tech with it. So here's what we've used uh, that money for so far. I bought a 2020 iMac, it's a refurb, um, and I bought an external monitor for it. That's to edit videos once I'm done healing here. Um, I'm still paying that down, by the way. I also went ahead and bought two new phones that I'm still paying down. And this is because I want to compare the two phones. Uh, as you're probably aware, phones, you know, the, the chip in each of these different kinds of phones takes pictures of the hair slightly differently. Um, and lighting matters a lot too. You could probably see what I'm wearing a lot more clearly. For example, upstairs when I was in an isolated studio environment at the beginning of this live stream, compared to now when I have, you know, natural backlighting, no matter how much light I put in front of me, it's gonna wash out what I'm doing here in this view. So uh, what we wanna do is kind of experiment with these phones. Um, and, and we want to do it in our, what I call the glam studio upstairs. It's where, when you see me take a bunch of pictures of myself and they're not outdoors, but I'm in that, that backdrop with like the, the lighting and the sequins and all that stuff. That's, that's literally what we call the glam studio. So with an isolated environment where the lighting is static, uh, I want to use two different phones, brand new phones to, to see how they look. And I want to share that with you so you can learn how these phones change the appearance of the actual hair. So that way you can take that information with you when you're looking at other people's videos. And hopefully they will start disclosing what kind of phones they're using, what kind of cameras they're using. So that way you can kind of use that as information here to figure out how distorted those images may or may not be. Because regardless of how meticulously you plan the photo shoot, the, the sensors and the technology will have some bearing on how those those colors in particular tend to turn out. I mean, some of you have probably noticed this on your end too. So the two phones I bought, it's a brand new um, Pixel. This is a Google Pixel 6 uh, Pro. And this is um, an iPhone, what are you? You're like new. I keep forgetting because I have multiple iPhones that I bought for this. This is, I believe, an iPhone, iPhone 13 Pro Max is what I believe this is. And uh, that is also here. So two extremely brand new, both released this year, top of the line phones. And I bought it specifically, like they don't have SIM cards in them. So I'm not using them as phones. I'm using them specifically for the photography value that they provide so I can disclose that to you. Um, so that's another thing that um, that Patreon money is gonna go towards. And I've already committed to them, obviously, because I bought them already. And then I'm also waiting on a brand new MacBook Pro because here, let me turn this camera on real quick so you can kind of see. Um, I wanna show you this, this MacBook Pro I'm currently using. This is 
a really, really, really old MacBook Pro. The cord is falling apart. You can't even see the letters on the keyboard. Yeah. So it's uh, it's it's kind of falling apart. So I, you know, even though I just bought the iMac upstairs for videos, I figured let's go ahead and get the MacBook Pro too, since I use my laptop so much. And I really, really wanted that M1 chip. You guys know that because I've mentioned that in previous videos too. And by golly, this time next year, I want to get this taken care of. I want to get the bingo wings <laughs> taken care of. So uh, let's see, did I want to say anything else about that stuff? Nope, that was, that was it for that. So uh, Nigel, if you want to go ahead and take over again. All righty. I, I don't think we can hear you. No. Oh, now I can. Okay. Yay. Right. You want to take some comments? That's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, let's see. Where do we leave off? We left off with Kenny saying, good evening, everyone. Hello, hey, Kenny. Kenny. Terry saying, hi, John. Good to finally see your face. Oh, Is wait, hold on. Hold on let me... before. You might have missed him. There you go. Here, Don, I'll leave this one on so they can see you in the middle. You don't even need to move. I'll move the camera. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, John's been in a couple other live streams before. I think you might have missed those, but uh, yeah. Every uh, once in a while. Tina asks, what about Tylenol? Doesn't that uh, aggravate your stomach? All those non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, the NSAIDs, they all they all irritate my sleeve. Um, so we're basically alternating the ibuprofen and the naproxen, because frankly, naproxen to me works the best, but it's also the harshest on my sleeve. So yeah. the, the gel caps that we've been using are fine. I'm sure Tylenol gel caps would probably be just as good. It's just I try not to put um, acetaminophen in the house because he's allergic to it. Yeah, not 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 like deathly allergic to it. It's just that, you know, if I take it, you know, it doesn't do my stomach any good. It's I just don't want you to accidentally take something that, you know, doesn't agree with you. But oh, Tylenol yeah. will probably work just as well, honestly. Yeah. And I like your Deadpool shirt. Ah, let's see. Wig Daisy. Jen asks, how long has it been? My bikini cut for an abdominal surgery took a month before I could walk much. Well, it's only been what? It's coming up on two weeks now, isn't it? Yeah, it's been two weeks. Uh, my mobility is still very limited. Um, I've gone up the stairs a grand total of three times so far since the surgery. All uh, three were today. Yes, all three were today. Um, I haven't driven myself yet. John's actually been driving me to all of my appointments. Uh, so thank you for that, John. And they can hear you if you want to talk. So, uh yeah, he's, he's a taciturn creature. Um, and then, uh, no, I, I'm i still having difficulty like getting in and out of the chairs. This chair is not so bad because it's a little higher up. Mm. Um, and the armchair, one of the armchairs, the one that a spare goose is currently sitting in <laughs> is the one that uh, is the easiest. But yeah, it's, it's and I've ha I have an ischemia too. I don't know if you had any issues with um, lipo burns or ischemia, but I have ischemia on my um, suture line. And that's part of the reason why I'm in so much pain right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, I can't, and I can't even wear my Fajas because um, uh, I can't have any compression on where the ischemia is. So I, I, I'm just stuck in a binder. I just have to keep buying progressively smaller binders uh, to try to get some of that bloating to go away, but it's, it's been, it's only been two weeks and it feels like it's been a year. <laughs> Honestly, it's been awful. Yeah. Pain, I mean, pain does tend to draw things out quite a bit. Yeah. But, but this is some very crisp and refreshing tea. So Good. what, what was this again? The Tower of London, isn't it? Tower of London blend. Yes. Yeah. Harney and Sons Tower of London blend. Those Harneys know how to make tea. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, on with the uh, comments here. Uh, Kenny says, I slept on the recliner too. It's not fun and recovery was tough. Hated the feeling of hard narcotic narcotics and I avoided them because of the constant sleepiness and euphoria. Oh, yeah. Well, also, and you can't go to the bathroom. And when you are recovering from abdominal surgery, where they literally repair that muscle wall and suture it back together, not being able to go to the bathroom is terrible. It is, it is like, it's, it's, I'm laughing because it's a funny thing to say. Not pooping hurts, but it does. It hurts a lot when you have this kind of surgery and you can't go to the bathroom and those pain pills just make it worse. Yeah. So I feel you on that, very hardcore. 
Uh, both beauty from within says, I hope you heal fast. And Serena says, I hope you start feeling better soon. Thank I you very say, much. I gotta say, she's she's been recuperating very strongly and very quickly, all things considered. She, she's, I'm, I'm sure she will amaze us all with her recuperative powers. <laughs> no pressure or anything. No, no, no I'm, I'm, I'm just quoting um, Neverwhere by... Um, is that Neil Gaiman again? Neil Gaiman, yeah, thank you. I, every time I have to remember a name, it goes immediately. As soon as it reaches the tip of my tongue, it vanishes into the ether. Like, I know who I'm talking about. It just pff, goes out of my brain. Ah. Okay. Wilma Nickers. Hi, Wilma. Yeah, you'll be seeing that very shortly. Oh, yes. And in fact, do you want to give them a sneak peek of what your locks look like? Like, what your, your, your locks look like before the topper? Let it flow, baby. That's what I look like. Unrestrained. He's, he's like, what, seven years older than me? And yet you've got more hair. Yeah, well, thinning a bit. Yeah, but uh, you still have more hair. You took, you took photos of my, my scalp earlier, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Do you want me to show? Yeah, let's go with that then. All right, hold on. Let me let me uh, cue that up. Um, boop. Ah, yes, here we go. Toppers are for guys, too. And this is what he, this is when his hair was oh, wet. Bloody hell, I didn't know it was that bad. Honey, it's, it's only because your hair was wet. That's why I wanted you to let me take the photo while your hair was, was wet still. Because yeah, that's fine. I just didn't know I was that thin on top because yeah, I don't have you, eyes on the top of my head. You still have more hair than I do. And this is exactly the kind of thinning that toppers were made for. Now, for guys, they call their toppers toupees, obviously, but they're essentially the same thing. Um, and you can definitely convert a woman's topper into a men's topper or toupee. You can absolutely do that. And um, one of the things that I wanted to put to you guys is if you would like Nigel to make a video showing how to customize the hairline of a topper to make it more masculine, please let us know on the replay. So that way um, we can see those comments in a static place. Uh, if you leave it here in the chat, we would literally have to comb through all those chat comments in order to see your feedback. So wait for the replay and let us know. Because even if you don't necessarily wanna make that hairline more masculine for your end, you could still learn how to customize the hairline with a sim with the same tutorial um, and just you know not go quite as deep. Because one of the tricky things, and I'm gonna go back a slide, um, to a men's topper, you got to look particularly at this image right here, right? You can see he's almost got like a really exaggerated widow's peak. You know, John, um, let me let me go ahead and go back into um, the smaller view for a second. Can you both lean in, guys, and show them your hairlines? Right now, John has like an extreme amount of hair, but you can still see even with thick hair, Guys have that thing where on the sides, it recedes here, right? And that's one of the big differences. I'm gonna take my wig off for a second. That's one of the big differences between a, a, a woman's topper and a men's topper. A men's topper has that really exaggerated hairline area, almost like an exaggerated widow's peak where it thins on the sides. And that is actually uh, what, what Nigel's got is actually androgenic alopecia on a guy. Right, it's it's normal. Most people experience this at some point in their lives. What I've well, got is an androgenic that Nicholson hairline. Yeah, no, it's not that bad, honestly. But for me, you know, I've got female pattern balding. I've got androgenic alopecia. They still call it that because it's caused by the same hormonal process. But this is what it does when when you have estrogen, like a girl, but you also have too much testosterone, and and your hair starts to recede. You end up with an intact hairline usually. And it just thins out everywhere else. So it's like this is thick and everything behind it is just going. <laughs> and that was another thing that Nigel really had to help me with when I had this surgery. A tummy tuck is so incredibly um, severe that... Um, it's a shock to the system, all right. Dude, I lost so much hair. Uh, I lost a ton of hair when, when I came out of surgery. Um, and it was... <laughs> Nigel has been a darling because he's, he's been helping me get rid of all of the evidence before I see it. <laughs> Even though I will say there are a couple of, of, of dust bunnies <laughs> in the living room, and I know, I know who made those. I know who made those. 
<laughs> ah, but uh, yeah, it's it's a lot. But you can see there's a difference between the hairlines. So if you would like to see a tutorial video, maybe on the main channel about how to customize a hairline, let us know on the replay. So back over to you, honey. All righty. Let's uh, continue with some comments. Get caught up on those first. All righty. Serena says that's a 2014-ish MacBook Pro. Looks yep. like mine. Uh, I hope you get a new one. Oh, yeah, an, an M1. I may end up getting a Mac Mini for my home server. I need to do research. Have you seen the Mac Studios? I wanted one so bad. I saw those instead of that Mac, the MacBook Pro, and I was like, oh, because like, it's pretty much perfect for making videos. But I was like, no, I literally just bought that iMac, and I'm still paying it off. And I literally just bought the second monitor for it. So I'm like, I'm, I could use the same monitor for a Mac Studio, but like, I'm good. So what if it's an Intel? I've got now a MacBook Pro coming that's got the M1 and I've got a sn snack, snazzy new iPhone that's wicked fast. So whatever, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> but I was severely tempted because it's like um, the Mac mini, except it has all of the bells and whistles also and better cooling. Yay. Oh yeah, because so, so, sometimes you, you, you turn on one of those I almost sound like Jimmy Stewart. You, you, you turn on one of those MacBooks, and uh, you, you, all of a sudden the fan kicks in, and it's just like an airplane taking off. So, <laughs> uh, uh, Kathleen over at Beauty from Within says, "I notice I can get different tones for light bulbs depending on which room I'm taking photos for reviews. We've got so many different lights in this place that you can yeah. not only change the uh, brightness, you also change the warmth of the tone." In yeah. fact, the one that Heather's using on her computer right now that you're that she's looking at right now, you can you can change the warmth. In fact, it's got like a bright sun and an, an, a little snowflake, depending on how much you want. There's there's ultra warm. Yeah. And uh, the other way downwards is ultra cool. There you go. I like to pick a mix. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean. The lighting options are fantastic and near infinite, I think, for that sort of thing. All righty, let's see. Oh, yeah, Wilma says, evening all. Hi, Wilma. You ready to mention that? Sean says, Heather, you look amazing and both are an inspiration to all couples oh, out there. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Sean. Sean, we love Sean. Yes, I have to say, though, it's like at least 80% Nigel. He's, he's just really, really sweet and adorable and lovely. And uh, no, so it, it, it's, it's easy for me to look lovely because I'm around somebody who's so lovely. <laughs> I tell, I tell him all the time. <laughs> you know it's true. I tell no. you all the time because you're wonderful. And then you tell me I'm wonderful and then it just becomes a mutual admiration society loop. <laughs> we are vomit inducingly cute. Speaking of vomit. Uh, I had an approxim for post-viral pain after bad shingles. Oh, shingles. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Talking talk about um, Serena and her wife had um, had uh, shingle vaccines just recently. Oh, wait. Oh. Yeah. So they're, they're both laid out for that. Can you set these over there? I don't want to get egg stuff on them. Smart. Yeah. Egg stuff. Not on, not on the new phones. I need to take pictures with them first. <laughs> it feels like an anvil. Thanks yeah. for helping her out, guys. Social dist. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Oh, yes. Barbara M. Did you have drains? Are they out? Yes. Oh, my gosh. And that's part of the reason why I'm able to actually get up the stairs now. I had I had one drain. One. And um, the drain, frankly, was not as, as uncomfortable as the ischemia. The ischemia is definitely more painful. Um, but uh, the, the drain it was such a pain in the butt because it was so hard to get the Faja on. It was super hard to get anything like the binder I'm wearing now. It was hard to get that on. Yeah. And frankly, that first week was disgusting. You know, the week you're leaning really heavy on the yeah. puppy pads yeah. and you're all ooey and gooey. And there was there was much goop. It was disgusting. It was so That's gross. Most of it up. <laughs> he, he's, a, he's a saint. I'm telling you. I've gone through like, quite a lot of vinyl gloves in the last couple of weeks you you're seriously a saint because i mean the the man has been like that first week he helped me go to the bathroom and stuff like that like it was it was a lot it was a lot and the drain made everything so complicated because it was just like this big bump on the side that anytime i touched it it was like ah. and getting it taken out didn't hurt 
I thought it would hurt. It didn't hurt till they actually got to the end and and, boop, and it made like a popping sound and that kind of hurt. Boy, I'm probably freaking something out. But that this is the reality of getting this kind of surgery. They call it a tummy tuck because I guess it sounds cute that way, but it is not cute. I, I feel like anyone who does this and survives it, it's like like that that is a tough person. I feel. I don't know how people do this solo is what I've been thinking the whole time because he's, he's, I mean, Nigel's kind of spoiling me a little bit, but he's been so. Well, I've, I've been on the receiving end of having to have medical care, you know, back in 2020 with the whole shattered hips thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I'm just doing for you what you did for me. Oh, but you, but you are, you've been wonderful. And um, I keep thinking the whole time, I'm like, I don't know how people do this without somebody there to help them like get up out of the chair and stuff like that. Like, for the first week, I couldn't even recline the chair on my own. And in fact, I still have problems reclining the chair I'm sleeping in. I, we, we have two different recliners in the living room. And one I can get in and out of pretty easily. It's a lazy boy. It's very no frills. But the other one is a really soft kind of cat napper recliner. And I sleep in that one. But I, I just can't, I still can't get enough pressure with my legs yet to be able to get it to, to, to stop reclining. So Nigel That's literally has to come over. Yeah, he has to like go like that to push it down. So hopefully that that won't be much longer. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see how it goes. And Serena says, "Oh no, ischemia. Will you get that managed?" Well, we're we're doing sort of like what is it called the um, the anti? It's not the the special anti burn cream, but the generic uh, anti antibiotic cream. We're using yeah. it is the sure antibiotic. Covered, just making sure that's covered and not frictionized or anything like that and got some antibiotics right it's it's getting better I yeah think. and the doctor's still monitoring it as in she she hasn't removed the tape from my suture line yet because it's it's we want to make sure that it's okay mm -hmm. um and uh that is getting taken care of next week mm -hmm. and she's she's really um they i keep sending them pictures um of it like on not on a daily basis but a few times uh each week since it's happened and uh, that way they can tell me if they need to phone in a, uh, a different cream or something like that. But she literally just looked at it Thursday. Hmm. So it is uh, being treated. It's just a slow healing process. It, it heals like a burn, hmm. you know, because it, it was like a big blister, like a big blood blister. And she, yeah. had to, um, she had to take care of that. And the thing is, I was so numbed up from the surgery still that I didn't even feel it that much. It was just not... Yeah, it, it, it... Yeah. About about the the what was it about the six or seven about the five or six day mark it started to uh, present itself yeah. um, like it took that while it took a while for it to you know look worse than the surrounding area yeah and then when we saw it, we thought oh we'd better talk to the, the the surgeon next time we see her which was like in a day or two after we noticed it so yeah. I will say, though, that it one thing, even though all of this stuff sounds really awful, I will say to me, it's still a positive, even even with all this, we'll see how it goes, right. But I had an overhanging gut that hung over, you know, I had a fupa that that I've had since I was six. Like I've had it a really, really long time because I just I start I was a very chubby tot that just grew up into a chubby adult. And that gut just kept growing and growing. And even when I lost weight the first time, when I was 16, I dropped 90 pounds. I was like one of those, I remember distinctly, there was a, there was a book in the Sweet Valley High series where Enid exercised a bunch and she lost a ton of weight over the course of the summer, came back from summer vacation and everyone thought that she was just like super hot. I had that, you know, in between my uh, freshman and sophomore years of high school. I dropped 90 pounds and got down to 135 pounds, which is smaller than I am now by, by, you know, I want to say about 45 pounds. And I, uh, I had that experience and even at 135 pounds at five foot eight, which is definitely like not overweight or anything like that. I was still in plus size clothing because the clothing hadn't changed. Now clothing is, sizes are a little bit more generous and they're a little bigger and the cuts are more forgiving. But in the 90s, that was not the case. So I was still in plus size clothing. And the only place I could shop was Lane Bryant, even at 135 pounds. And part of the reason why I was still plus sized was because I had all this skin. I had all this skin and I still had an overhanging gut. It was just, you know, completely deflated. So, um, that is uh it's a it's a very real thing and so i'm i'm very 
I feel, feel blessed that I was at a point in my life where I was able to lose that weight with the help of surgery. Thank you, modern science. And thank you, Dr. Alvarez, right? And then um, I lost that weight, kept it off for five years, and then got this done. And, you know, the, if it's one of those things where this is, this is a very significant surgery. It's very high risk. It's actually what Kanye West's mom died of was complications during a tummy tuck. So, I mean, it's, it's a big deal and it's a high risk surgery. So you want to, you want to make sure you're taking care of yourself. You're in good physical condition before you get it. But I feel very blessed that the stars aligned and the timing was right. And I was able to, to make that happen. And so even though I've got this little bit of ischemia and it sucks and it hurts, I kind of knew that this, this was a surgery with a high risk of complications. And if this is the only complication I have and it heals up, whatever, because the, whatever scar it forms is, is small and it's right on that line where the main scar would be anyway. So as long as everything heals up okay, I, I'll, I will be fine with it. I just can't wait for it to heal because it hurts. <laughs> All righty, which reminds me, Barbara says, Please stay ahead of the paint, not chase it. Well, we're trying to. Yeah. We're trying to. Um, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes we manage it. But yeah, it does get away. And um, Kathleen over at Beauty From Within says, how does the binder reduce swelling? I was never given a binder band for my multiple ab surgeries. Probably would have reduced the swelling faster. Doesn't really reduce the swelling. No, it, it absolutely it does. You're wrong. So here, let me, let me do this one. Okay. Right. So uh, it absolutely does reduce the swelling if you've had liposuction. That's that's the important part here. I, I had liposuction in addition to the tummy tuck because I I have, um, as I mentioned, I have, I have androgenic alopecia and part of that's because I have polycystic ovarian syndrome. I'm hormonally intersexed is the easiest way to think about it. Um, because uh, I, I have, I'm on testosterone blockers every day of my life. I'm on spironolactone. And in fact, that was one of the medications I started up the fastest after surgery because it helps reduce swelling too. Um, but I, I am on um, 50 milligrams of spironolactone a day and I have to suppress my testosterone levels or else I will grow a mustache and all kinds of stuff. And, and part of this is, is relevant because that high testosterone problem started before my, my puberty was really finished. So that, that affected how my body developed. My bone structure, for example, was impacted by the testosterone. My ribs flare out at the bottom like a guy's rib cage. Um, and, and that is the result of having too much testosterone in my system while well, I was- like an opera singer, aren't you? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it has its benefits, <laughs> but it's definitely the result of that. You know, I, I have just a bigger bone structure than most girls do. My, my vocal cords are quite thick, so uh, I can sing, I can basically sing almost like bass uh, if I really want to, though I use it to, I, I have a wide range. I sing soprano most of the time. Because um, resonance chambers matter when determining what uh, vocal fuck you are, right? Uh, that was not a cuss word, by the way. <laughs> and then um, I, so all these things matter. And um, I want a female body. I want a female body. Like I, I don't, I mean, this might be TMI and I'm not going to show you to prove it, but, um, it affected, for example, the way that my breasts developed. I have more breast tissue in my back and underarm area than I do in the front. And what developed in the front looks a little bit more like, what do they call it when guys have boobs? Gynecomastia. Gynecomastia. Is that it? I don't know. It's a word, but so you, know she's doing. Yeah, when, when, when guys have man boobs, it looks a certain way, right? That's how mine kind of developed. And so there, there are lots of parts of me that aren't, I mean, I feel like, you know, I'm a cisgender, very femme, girly girl, right? Like, I feel like that. I love playing with my hair and my makeup. You guys know that, my nails. But uh, my body just does not reflect this at all, naturally. So I had liposuction so that way I could actually get some of that. I'll never have like a really intense snatched contour because like i said my rib cage is going to be a limiting factor there and it kind of flares out but she can she can lipo my flanks she can lipo the side boobs and so she did a little bit of side boob not not the whole thing because you know I'm, i might want to have some kind of reconstructive thing go on up here someday but um she did flank liposuction and liposuction of my gut a little bit and then the rest was just taking away the skin because it was pretty deflated uh in terms of my gut Anybody else, honey? 
Yes, right. Just a second here, um, because it skipped just now. Um, right. Let me know if you want to say anything. I'll turn the camera back on for you. Okay. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it just skipped, and I have to find the place again. All righty. Cheryl says, hope you get better fast. There are Thank coats you. available or under the furniture legs to lift chairs, sofa, and beds. Yeah, um, we've got some, we've got like some uh, under the leg pads for her to raise her legs a bit. But, you know, I haven't got a lot of heck of a lot going on at the moment, so I'm happy to help out as it is. Um, Kathleen says, with many surgeries I've had, hair loss does happen, stress on the body. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah we're familiar with uh, totally. medical stress hair loss. Tina says, I go in for my second COVID booster next week. Well done. Success with that. Um, Cheryl says, Tina, let's share some tips as we learn the camera and editor. Are you game? That sounds excellent. That is such a good idea. Yes. Just helping each other out. That's right. That's right. Let me sure. The, excellent. Yes. Awesome. Because the thing is, like, learning how to do the lighting, learning how to do the cameras, and just playing, figuring out the limitations of the cameras and stuff, the, and the lighting, it's so expensive. It's expensive, it's time consuming, and it's really frustrating. So if we can all help each other along the way, we, we will save each other a heck of a lot of money and time for sure. That's why I wanna make sure, you know, I wanna test these top of the line cameras so that if you're interested in one, you know exactly what you're gonna get and what the results are gonna look like. Uh, mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, having to play around with it. These things are expensive, right? So. Mm -hmm. And lighting can get really crazy too. Kenny says, if you can help your husband with a suppository and he helps with your ostomy bag, that's a match made in heaven. That is love right there. <laughs> yes. Proof of concept, proof of love right there. Absolutely. Sarah says, it's seriously huge surgery, but I'm so pleased for you that you got it done. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, Tina suggested a power recliner. Uh, yeah, it's a little too late now, but yeah, yeah. If, if I had to buy one over again, I probably would have done that. Kathleen says, I agree, hard to do anything when you have abdominal surgery. The pain is real. Oh, yeah, definitely. I've been leaning on Asparagus the frog a lot. He's, he's oh, yeah. like a pillow, and I just go, <laughs> Cheryl says, I don't have a hairline or very thin, light, short fuzz on the hole on top of my mm. head. But my hair grows out a lot like Bozo, so I keep it buzzed. <laughs> I could kind of identify with that a little bit. Because the hormonal changes to your hair can do crazy things and a lot of people oh yeah i mean this is th this frizziness i didn't used to be frizzy and then i started taking um methotrexate which is a chemo drug for my rheumatoid arthritis and as soon as i started taking that i started frizzing up at the slightest provocation yeah no i it's it's um it's real and you hear this a lot from people after they've had chemotherapy because chemotherapy and radiation sometimes particularly if it's in on their head or near their head it like uh, changes their hormones and their hair changes and and it it gets all fuzzy on top and i notice that when my hair is short it just goes poof. yeah it's it's absolutely like um almost like clown hair poof. Mm. kenny says after all you've been through i hope your recovery is quick you look great thank you she is, she is recovering very quickly all things considered she is yeah. she, she is a champ at regeneration i think i think both Heather and I have superhuman mutant regenerative properties. Yeah, I'll be happy when the ischemia clears up so I can get more compression on my midsection a little bit because as I was saying earlier, I didn't want to miss this. Um, the reason why the compression helps a lot post liposuction is because there's a void there now where the mm -hmm. fat cells used to be. You want to get that skin to contract. Yeah. You want to encourage it to contract naturally. And then um, the, the other reason why is because they're disrupting like the lymphatic system and all those tiny little blood vessels under the skin when they do liposuction. So you end up very bruised afterwards and kind of, you know, oozy because they leak, wherever the port was where they did the lipo, they usually leave that open. And so they just let it leak out of gross, but yeah. it doesn't last forever. So uh, hence the puppy pads everywhere. Um, yeah. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch the beginning of, of the live streams I showed. But um, what you're doing is you're helping that move along a little bit faster, you know, by getting the skin to kind of uh, contract a little bit faster, getting, you know, the blood vessels to sync up a little bit more in the lymphatic system to figure out what the hell's going on. Mm -hmm. All that's good. So massage is helpful um, for that reason, because it kind of helps break down some of the scar tissue so you can get some of that fluid moving around. 
Um, but it's, it's very, very traumatic to have liposuction. Um, and, uh, this is, uh, the largest area on my body where I've ever had anything like that done. And it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. And, um, you know, I've seen pictures of people who end up very, very bruised. I, I was lucky I didn't, I didn't have that much bruising, but, uh, be prepared for it. If you get, get this kind of contouring with liposuction, because it's, it, it's kind of gross for like a week and you look like you got into a really bad fight with a velociraptor. <laughs> the, the binding helps right a lot. Here, your belly, maybe spilling your guts. <laughs> he makes a great velociraptor sound. Can you oh, do it? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm a bit too, I'm a bit too sauce to do this. At the moment. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Basically, it's, it's like you, you, you inhale while um, trying to purr like a cat. So it goes, no, I, I I can't do it. I'm a bit too dry at the moment. That's all right. That's all right. We'll try it again like next week, maybe. Yeah. Anyway, let's crack on because we're nearly at the, we're over the one hour mark. Yeah. And we, but, I was gonna say on. why why don't John and I turn off our cameras for a little bit, try to play around with the egg, see if it works, and then come right. back in in a little bit. How's that sound? Okay, that's good. Let me take some comments, get caught up on the comments, and then we'll go on with other stuff. Okay. Um. Uh, Tina says, just as long as you don't get cellulitis. Yes, let's hope that happens. Definitely. Uh, Liz says, by the way, my husband has been here watching and loves the way Vaughn looks on Heather. I have three Vaughns. I'm waiting for my fourth in Royal Bell. But excellent. Thank you very much indeed for your patronage, Liz. We, we definitely appreciate it. Shelly says, I have bat wings too. I think they're hereditary. Mm, yeah, they can be. I think uh, Kathleen says, I want to get a tummy tuck after four kids with weight going up and down. Skin does not bounce back. No, it does not. I've learned that myself. Tina, I haven't seen you yet today. Hi, Tina. I started my bariatric surgery journey, partly influenced by Heather, a fellow sister. Likely will be in September. Well, X, I just popped my earpiece out. Well, that's excellent, Tina. And I hope you have a good experience with it. Um, yeah, Heather, Heather took a while to get over it, but uh, the results speak for themselves, losing like 110 pounds, something like that. And um, yeah, I, I hope you, you uh, do really well. And she's got a whole um, series of her gastric sleeve surgery stuff. So that's, that's a very good uh, knowledge depository for, for you to refer to it if you need it. But well done. Congratulations. And I hope it goes really well for you. Um, Serena says, ah, I can say I'm built like an opera singer. Lol. Excellent. Yeah. yeah nothing wrong with that. Me, I've got a huge rib cage. Uh, before I started working in a casino, I had a six liter lung capacity and then all the smoke being blown in my face kind of reduced that to about five, but, uh, yeah, opera singer, nothing wrong with that. Uh, and Serena confirms gynecomastia. Yes. Excellent. All right, where are we here? Oh, got some skipping here. Um, dum, 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 dum. What? No matter how much weight I lost, I still have a big butt, aka but what? Nothing wrong with that. Some guys like that. Some gals like that. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Uh, I love helping people and love learning new things from others. Always a great thing. I I consider it a wasted day if I don't learn something new. And Barbara says, you sound like you're doing very well. Bless you to Nigel and John for helping. Thank you, Barbara. Well, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, taking pics with Poshmark has been fun. Not, oh, yeah, I know that feeling. Been doing a bit, did a bit of that myself. Trixie Tony. Hi, Trixie Tony. I haven't seen a comment from you yet today. I'm so happy for you, Heather. Do what makes you happy. It's hard to get the body that truly reflects you. Having realistic expectations is key. Yes, true. Being trans, I've had many surgeries over the years. It can be tough. It can be tough, definitely. And it's every single one is a shock to the system that just surprises you sometimes with, with how much of a shock to the system it is. I wanted to pop in and say thank you. I'm, I still have the, the speaker on while we're preparing the eggs over here because we're dying some tie-dye Easter eggs. But thank you because I oftentimes think about what this must be like for a trans woman because, you know, Obviously, a lot a lot of trans women take spironolactone like I do. Um, I, I've tried taking um, estradiol supplements because I'm low on E, uh, just kind of naturally. And that 
that didn't go well. Uh, it, it gives me ovarian cysts, so I, I can't use it. But when I was able to be on E, I loved it because my voice got a little higher, my skin got a little clearer. Uh, it was it was pretty awesome, actually. But uh, well, before you go any further, before you go any further, I've I've got to mention this. Okay. Uh, because it's Easter. Easter is the Saxon goddess of spring and fertility. Yes. And because fertility. Her symbols are the rabbit, which, as we all know, are extremely fertile, and the egg. And that's also where we get the name of the female hormone, estrogen. Ah, very good. Yes. Yes. But I, I yeah, I, I often wonder what this must be like for trans women or basically anybody who wants like a more feminine um, presentation. You know, it's just it's hard. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure it's hard even for, for regular cisgender women who who naturally have, you know, a certain build. If it's not how they feel like they should look. I mean, we're all kind of indoctrinated to think that we need to look a certain way. And I don't feel like it's worthwhile to blame ourselves for internalizing that because I think it's natural, particularly when it's culturally reinforced so rigidly. You know, I think I think that it's it's natural to want to, you know, look a certain way if you feel a certain way. And I, I want to thank you, Trixie, for, for saying that. And anybody else who is chiming in about, you know, either having this surgery or doing something like this to, to improve their appearance, because I think it's a brave thing to do. You're it's taking a risk every time. And mm -hmm. it's, it's, I, I don't know many people who do that lightly. And I think that it's, it's one of those things where you know some people just aren't going to understand it, and you just kind of have to do it anyway. Right. Yeah. And I want to applaud you for that, because I know right now in particular, there's a lot of like plastic sur surgery shaming out there. Why? Yeah. It's, yeah. I, I don't get that myself. It's like they, they shame you if you don't look 100, if you don't look 21 and perky. And right. they shame you if you do get the surgery to look 21 right. and perky. OK, so you want people who are 21 and that's it. Everyone else is useless and contemptible. So. And, 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 and born naturally like Brooklyn Decker. Yeah, we should we should all just be like that. that We're failing for not being that. I, I hate that. Right. Oh, oh man. But yeah, you're so you're me, thy name is the Internet. <laughs> but that's just it. All, the, all that plastic surgery shaming does is encourage people to not tell people about it. They're still yeah. going to get it done either way. If they really, we know there are people out there. We know there are people out there who have obviously had some surgery and why not just cop to it? I mean, I, to me, I feel like this is, this is a brave thing to do. And of course yeah. I'm shameless and biased because I've done it, but most <laughs> humans do not have cheeks like that. I'm just saying there are some people. All right. I'm going to go ahead and go back off screen. Thanks yeah. for letting me chime in. Okay, Deborah says hi, guys. Hi, Deborah. Glad you could join us. Thanks for joining us. Tina says, "Love my power reclining sofa. Love it, and so do the cats." Oh, that is that is my dream to get one of those big, huge sectionals with a power reclining. Oh, maybe someday. And Trixie Tony says, "Get well soon, Heather. Thank you of you. Thank you very much indeed, my dear." Kamaz Kamaz says, "I had the same surgery, and on post-op day three, we had a tornado warning." No, I did not go down to the basement. Happy healing, Heather. It's very rough surgery, but well worth it. Thank you for that well wishing. And wow, what a t what a time to be um, incapacitated by a surgery during a tornado. Wow. Ah, my mom had cancer, and after it with the drugs, her hair has curl in it now. Yeah, it's amazing what what uh, chemo will do to your hair. Because I mean, I used to have like wavy hair, and you can see it here in the longer bits. This is about what. Uh, what my hair looked like anyway, but when it's shorter, this frizz, that's all new. Serene! Hi, Serene! Glad you can make it. Thanks for joining us. You're here! Good stuff. Um, and no, Deborah, insurance does not cover it. Heather has been saving up for the, the surgery piece by piece pretty much almost since she since she had the gastric sleeve surgery done. It's it's uh, she, she planned well ahead of it. Um, so yeah, she she's been saving up for it. So no, it's not an it's not an insurance thing. Okay, and Amica, oh Arnica has really helped me with bruising. Heather, get some if you're not already on it. Yes, she's definitely already on it. Uh, we ordered some last week sometime, and she's been taking it as necessary. So yeah, good tip though. Good tip. 
Uh, Vaughn is abs one of the absolute best wigs. I agree. Thank you, Serene. You're a great sport and a great supporter, and we appreciate you for it. Uh, my insurance will not cover those surgeries. Wish they did. Yeah. Know what you mean. Prayer heart. Thank you, Tina. Much appreciated. Serena, thanks for the shout out. Yeah, well, I mean, you're 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 a medical professional. You know this stuff. So, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Cheryl says Arnica cream. Hey, that, that might be something to look into, Heather. Arnica cream. Um, yay, Easter. Good stuff. And you're welcome, Liz. Definitely. Uh, just had soda go up my nose. My sympathies. It's bad enough when it's milk, but soda, that just stings all the more. <sighs> Shelly says, after my breast cancer, Doc, Doc had me on estrogen blockers. I can imagine that. And Serena says, yeah, it's tough to do a feminine presentation. Oh, it can be. It can be. I, I don't speak from experience, but I know from people who have done. Um, and Kathleen from Beauty Within says, yes, you do what makes you feel good. Body shaming is so awful. I don't get, you know, there are some things that are worth shaming people for. All right. Stuff that's out of their control. Medical, physical stuff that's out of their control is not worth shaming people for. You know, behavioral stuff. That's worth shaming people for. Being an asshole. That's worth shaming people for. Having your hormones go out of control and make you make your body do weird things, that's not worth shaming people for. Trying to fix those things that hormones have done to your body that have gone out of control, that's not worth shaming people for. Some people are just nasty, you know? Heather just shouted something and I didn't hear it from downstairs. Okay, getting there. All right. And I broke out of that nonsense for following body positivity accounts on social media and hashtags like F your beauty standards. It's helped a lot. Well, that sounds like a good idea. Um, Tina says, I'd rather be built like Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, I can imagine that. Um, Serene says, Heather, I missed the beginning. Feel better soon. Thank you, Serene. And Trixie Tony says, you are very brave. Take care, honey. Thank you very much indeed for those kind words and well wishes. Um, Kathleen from Beauty Within says, I do love Vaughn. Have three and need all the other colors as well. Thank you. Hope you get those. And uh, shaming has major ramifications for emotional development. Nastiness is destructive. Yeah, I think, like I said earlier, some of it is instructive. Like if it stops people from being assholes. That's worthwhile. If it's shaming someone for other reasons, that's useless. Waiting for my seventh Vaughn. Cheryl, thank you. We like you and we appreciate you. Oh, definitely. Deborah says, so jealous I want the surgery. All my fat only goes to my stomach like a guy. Same. You can appreciate that. And Liz says, I can imagine having a dozen of them. They are so beautiful. Thank you very much indeed, Liz. Ser seriously, I've got to say this now before we go on to the next thing. Now that I've caught up with all the uh, comments, we really do appreciate our customers. We really do. And it, it, it warms the cockles of my heart. Nay, it verily burns them to a cinder to see all the support and love and... Uh, patronage we get from from all you fine folks and it just feels so damn good and it's really 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 nice i've had two bumboos now so i'm a, my uh, facility with language is a bit diminished as you can imagine he said using four syllable words okay so immigration update i got my green card Hooray! i just thought i'd mention that um, I've, I've mentioned it to the um, Patreon patrons, and I've mentioned it on Facebook, but I'm mentioning it here now for everyone. Got my green card. I'm now a legal resident of the USA, and yeah, so I'm sticking around for a while. Right, now then, let's get to the topper, shall we? This is the Sorrel Topper in 
hazelnut truffle R. It's the closest we make to my own hair color, as you can see. I'm more of a sort of 4-6 color with a bit of gray in, but you know, this is pretty close. This is the sort of thing I think Liz Lyons would be interested in because, you know, she likes brunettes and, you know, so do I. Turn it inside out, you can see it's got clips, hair clips, pressure clips all the way around. There's that cute little Moon Kitty logo right there. It's got a lovely top and it's got a lace front. So if you see Sorrel LF, that's what the LF stands for, a lace front. There we go. That's pretty much what it looks like. Basically, it's a toupee for women. Or guys, you know, it's just that guys have toupee as opposed to topper, which pretty much works out the same way. Now, I practiced earlier. Um, John brought this over um, recently, but I was practicing with one of our other toppers. Um, so I'm hoping I can get this to work, but we'll see how it goes. And I'm going to make sure I've got this parted in all the same way, and we're going to slip this on. Do, 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 do. Combs just like any other wig, you know, my tooth comb, la da da da. Show that up. Nice, lovely highlights in there with the dark brunette, some light brown, some dark blonde, la da 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 da. -da. Right. I'm going to see what I can do. <laughs> Well, that's about where my hairline is. And it's snapping in nicely. There we go. You know, dude, I, if you want, I can align your chakras. So yeah, this is it. This is the uh, Sorrel Topper in Hazelnut Truffle R. I yes, my sweet. I want to see how well you did. I want to check your clips and stuff. Heather, I'm going to grade your paper. My... Oh no. Do I smell like vinegar? No. Yay! Okay, I did wash my hands before I came up here. Ah! Matt? You're pulling my hair. Sorry. Well, that's why I'm checking your clips. See, one of the things. Okay, it's this one, right? It's all of them, I think. Okay, that's that's the issue. You don't have to go that far back. Okay. I do because you're pulling my hair. I need you to let me pull your hair a little bit. Okay. Because okay? I want to. Apparently, I need more practice. I this. want you to avoid pulling your hair a lot. Right, right. That's right. the problem, right? Like yeah. this is an important lesson for toppers. Okay. That won't go back. Oh, it does. Go Absolutely back does. Okay, okay, cool. So you can go ahead. And... This is why I wanted to come up here again. So I think that's what four or five times I've been up the stairs now. Yay! Hooray! Right? High five. Uh, I'm definitely gonna have to take it easy after this. But toppers are tricky. You want to avoid traction alopecia when you mm. wear a topper. So if you get any pulling at all on your hair that that that's beyond just a tiny little tug, there's a big difference. You'll know it when you feel it because it feels painful. It feels like your hair is getting pulled, right? But otherwise, it's just a little little tug, not yoink, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You want to avoid that immediately when you put your clips in, because if if you feel it at first, you're going to feel it worse as the day goes on. And that kind of pressure on your hair, particularly where these things get applied, which is where that thinning typically ends up after a while, you're going to end up with traction alopecia. The same thing holds true, by the way, for glue and adhesives and combs, anything that you would use, like an appliance of any kind or glue, to get, get your wig or topper to stay in place or like your lace front in place. That's how people end up with traction alopecia. You want to make sure there's no pulling. There shouldn't be any discomfort. So let me go ahead and this is why I say you got to let me pull your hair because I'm actually going to undo these clips and do them properly. All right. Mm. And so you got to bear with me. Your hair is very, very fine. Right. So one thing that people do when they go to wear toppers, you, you, can you please sit normal? Right. Because you moving around means you're going to make me pull your hair more. 
<laughs> so stop it. Um, well, I keep touching me so I keep moving. You just stay still like you're a mannequin. Keep dead eyes. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, okay, now that's I'm creeping me out. I'm doing my Ron Swanson. <laughs> I know more than you. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this, this one of the things that people do to kind of like strengthen this up is the little hairspray. Hairspray, got to be glued, uh, something that makes their hair kind of crunchy and makes the strands kind of clump together. That kind of stuff is great to wear under the where those clips and combs get applied on your choppers because it, it encourages, I'm going to have to kneel a little bit. Oh, uh, it sorry, I just had a tummy tuck. Um, the, it encourages the, the, the clips to stick to clumps of hair as opposed to individual strands. And that mm -hmm. means you're less likely to feel that tension on individual strands that cause that causes that kind of acute pain. Mm -hmm. So this topper, by the way, it looks great on you. Well, thank you. I'm not even going to do this front clip. You don't have enough hair right here. And that's not a jab. That goes back to that male hairline thing I was mentioning. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not taking it for too personally. Okay. I just did the eye narrowing as a, as a gag. Okay. So your hair is very clean. and I hope so. Yeah, I showered just it's, before it's this. It's very, very clean. And so because of that, it's, it's going to be a little bit more likely to get pulled. That's true. Dirty hair sticks better. Um, so... This is this one of the reasons why dry shampoo is, is, a, is a blessing, because that's another thing you can use to kind of like go in between washes a little bit longer. That's great when you wear a topper. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is you want, really want to be intentional about where you're adhering this. So you kind of want to go in like that and up. Does that pull? No. Okay, hold on a second. I'm going to snap it. Ah, no, I feel it. All right. Okay. But it, it, is it pulling like it was earlier? No. No. Yeah, you want to go in like that and then mm -hmm. snap it. And you want to make sure it isn't uncomfortable before you snap it in place because it's mm -hmm. going to get a little tighter in that area when you snap it. And that's why mm -hmm. he went, oh, because it, it does. It kind of goes, boop, and it goes straight. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go to the rest of what you got going on here. I'm following the perimeter of the topper. Mm -hmm. Again, this looks really, really good on you. Thank All right, you. this clip is still open. So again, I'm going to try to be really deliberate. I'm literally grabbing like a piece of his hair at, at the root, right? And now we're doing downward facing dog. No, I just want to make sure I'm grabbing a cluster of hair and not just, you know, whatever I can grab. Does that pull? No. Okay. There we go. We're making progress. Now, let me check this back one a little bit. And the thing is... One of the things you might want to do when you're applying these yourself is get a little hand mirror and just look in the mirror, you know, as you're doing this, because it doesn't need to be that precise, you know, like I'm not using a comb to grab sections of hair. I'm just using my hands. So this is definitely something you could learn to do by feel, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and if you're an everyday topper wearer, you already have this down probably. So again, I'm grabbing a clump of hair at the root. Does mm -hmm. that pull? Yes. Okay. Does that pull? That's better. Okay, so we'll have to check that out when we're done because we want to make sure this is far enough back and that this right. is far enough back. Otherwise, right. you're going to end up with like a <laughs> like a Peggy Bundy situation. Um, Ow! <laughs> Let's see here. We recent, well, I, I wouldn't say recently, but we watched our way through the entire um, Married with Children series. Very, very sudden ending to that, I'm afraid. Yeah. That, that show was so snarky. You can't take it oh. literally or you'll be offended by the whole thing. It's meant yeah. to be offensive. Yeah. It's, and it was it, offensive back then, too. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, the whole thing about those, it was meant to be making fun of those kind of people. And um, Does this pull? Yeah. Uh, no, that's fine. That's perfect. Good stuff. You can tell I've done this before. Uh, Once or twice. Yeah, I used to wear these uh, these kind of things every day. And by the way, Sorrel was, was one that I was very keen to make mm -hmm. because... Um, this is always the kind of topper I wanted when I wore toppers. Mm -hmm. Full. It's a full topper, which means that you have lots of opportunity to customize the monofilament. It has a fully hand-tied monofilament base. There are no wefts uh, in this one, are there? Are there wefts? There might be some wefts. I don't think so, no. Well, hold on, let me check. There might be a couple. Maybe towards the back? Maybe towards the back. Back has a little bit. But the rest of it is completely hand-tied base. And she even has a lace front. Now, one of the things that Nigel did, and it's kind of clever, he left some of his own hair kind of stick out here, right? That was not intentional. Well, that's that's a good thing to do if you have a widow's peak. Good. Or or if you have um, a male hairline. 
because you know if, if at some point he's going to want to customize this and bring it in a little bit yeah. right by plucking out some of the hair um but for now that's a good approximation and it means that you're you're right on target for where your hairline should be for women it's like a four finger rule for mm -hmm. guys it's like four, where the hairline is it's like four and a half or five so if your hairline's receded quite a bit take your whole hand and see what you think of that from the eyebrow up or use the four fingers and kind of pick something in between, right? But that's usually safe for guys is if they use all five fingers, including their thumb. And then that's usually where that hairline should be. You might want to dust your hand off. I'll wash them when I go downstairs. <laughs> I, I got to play around with vinegar some more too. Oh boy, We're, vinegar. John is still downstairs dying eggs. So we, all right. we figured it out and it, it doesn't come out looking the way that it looks like it should on the It box. never does. It never does. Yeah. Your results may vary. Hold on. I'm going to flip it. Okay, let me know if any of this starts pulling or tugging. That's important. I'll let you know. Yeah, we don't we don't like to encourage people to end up with more alopecia, right? That's that's bad. Traction alopecia, bad. That is bad. Okay, now I'm gonna do this one again. I'm not gonna do this one right in the front. Um, and then like a little chunk of hair. See, I wasn't doing anything that scientific. How's no, that feel? That's fine. All right, cool. And see, I go up, and then clip it closed. Good stuff. And how do you feel about where that's sitting? Ah, uh, a little bit. There we it's go. It's a little right. far back, too, I think. Um, hold on. Yeah, it's a little bit far back. Hold on. Does it pull when I do that? No. Okay. Right. Cool. I like that. Well, let me see if I can actually get this one to close on you. Because we may remove these clips. That may be the front ones. Mm. Because for guys, sometimes you have to do that. For a woman, you you will probably have a hairline there. Okay, hold on. Yeah, for guys, if you've got a receding hairline, that might just put metal straight against Does your scalp. Does that hurt? No. Okay. Let me try the other one and see if I can get that in. Now, if, you're, if you've receded so much that that front clip won't work for you, mm -hmm. um, that's okay. Like I was saying, take the front clip out with a pair of... Um, seam rippers, you seam know, rippers, yeah. or like a little pair of shears, mm -hmm. just cut those clips out and then you can use adhesive, right? And that, that will probably be better for you than trying to mm -hmm. use the front clips. Again, these things are meant to be yours. They're meant to be customized. Okay. I'm going to try it on this side too. Does that hurt? No. Okay, is that more so. or less comfortable than how you had it? That's a little bit more comfortable, yeah. Awesome. That, okay. The color looks super good on you. All right, well, now that you've got that all together, I'll let you do the rest, honey. Okay, so this is it. Yeah, you can see nice sort of wavy every day and every way I look lovelier and lovelier. <clears throat> Old Danger Mouse cartoon quote. <coughs> All right. So, yeah, this is the Sorrel Topper in Hazelnut Truffle R. It's nice and wavy and uh, good stuff. And if you're interested, we can throw together a video about how to pluck the lace front for a custom hairline that's closer to your own. So who likes the sound of that? Uh, if you do, wait until this live stream is over and pop a comment in the section below. Okay? And if we get enough people who are interested in it in the comments below, we'll put together a video and um, maybe that will be available in a week or two or so. How, does that sound good to everyone? Okay? Okay. All right, so this is the hazelnut truffle R on the... Sorrel topper. What do you think? Hmm. And sort of Renaissance festival here, sort of thing going. I miss having long hair. Well, I mean, I have long hair beyond this anyway, because I haven't had a haircut since the beginning of the pandemic. But um, yeah, at one point I had like two and a half foot long. It hair. looks good on you. That color looks really good on you. I've had a lot of rum. <laughs> the, did you hear me, honey? Can't hear a word you're saying. Let me put my earpiece in. Oh, sorry. You were saying my passion. It looks good on you. The color looks really, really good on you. 
Yep. I mean, it is slightly Renaissance festival, but that's heat friendly fiber. So you could always make it whatever texture you wanted. I, I think it's actually a pretty nice stand in for your natural texture. Your natural texture is even slightly curlier than that, I think. Well, it didn't used to be before the uh, the methotrexate, the chemo for my arthritis. But yeah, this is this is actually what my hair used to look like before the the, the, the chemo. Oh wow! Well, that that color, by the way, was inspired by Raquel Welch's glazed hazelnut. It is modified though, as in like I didn't put as much red in the front, and I added, as Nigel mentioned, a little bit of an ashy color in there in in a very very small amount to kind of tone it down. So if anything, it's a little bit more dynamic than that color, but it's definitely inspired by it. So if you like that, you'll like our glazed hazelnut our color. Excellent. Or, not the... glazed hazelnut. What is that? We call that glazed hazelnut, don't we? Yeah. So there no, you go. No, it's... It's hazelnut something. Hazelnut truffle, is that what I called it? Thank you. I just wanted you to know what it was inspired by. It's yeah. inspired by that whole family of colors, but it is different. Like I said, if you're expecting that exact color, you won't get it because it has a lot more red in the front. Anybody who's owned that color can probably attest to that. It's it's a slightly more auburn color than what Nigel's wearing. And his has a, has a little bit more of a cool tone added to some of the highlights than glazed hazelnut does. So it is a different color. It's just inspired by it and i get confused with the name sometimes all right let's get let's get some um comments going shall we okay serene says green card yes followed by tina applause thank you followed by awesome so happy for you nigel thank you kathleen followed by jen saying hooray followed by serena Woo! followed by shelly yay followed by tina Fist bump. Yeah. Followed by Liz saying, immediately contact the studios in LA for voiceover. Nigel, you're a natural. Thank you, Liz. In fact, more on that in a little bit. In fact, Heather's got a, a, um, a customer who uh, runs a voiceover agency. So I've been thinking, I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting for this so I can get in touch with her. And Serene says, what a lovely color hazelnut truffle R that is. Yeah, I do like this. It's it's uh, it's kind of like what I would do if I got my my hair my hair highlighted. It's quite nice. And oh yes, that color is gorgeous. I do like it. I do like it. And that topper is so beautifully made. Never seen one that well done. You hear that, Heather? Liz thinks it's the I just heard her go, woo! That's that's awesome. Thank you. It it is a it's beautiful. It's a beautiful topper. I, I wore all of them before we released them. And and Sorrel is probably my favorite because it's the most deluxe. But they're they're all really good. And I, I think some of you will really like our, our uh, I believe it's the Lydia when it comes out because it's a really funky little little thing. It's a short uh, topper. But I'm going to take myself off camera and just show you the view of me dying eggs for a little bit. But I can still hear you and I'll still have my mic on. All right, my sweet. Yeah. Um, yeah, looks great, says Kathleen. Thank you, Kathleen. What else we got here? Um, Deborah says, congrats, Nigel. Love you. Thank you, Deborah. Much appreciated. And Kathleen, uh, sorry, Jen says, stars in her eyes. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> No, <laughs> gorgeous. Kelly says, "Woohoo! Congratulations, Idol. Thank you, Kelly." Uh, Cheryl says, "I'm behind. You look gorgeous, Idol. Oh, thank you. Bring out the rosy in my cheek." Barbara says, "Oh, you be darling, Nigel. Can you be a meatloaf understudy?" So <laughs> <laughs> my favorite, my favorite moment from Meatloaf was when he participated in the Royal Family Charity Knockout back in nineteen. I want to say eighty-seven. I could be wrong, but he was very fun. Uh, Sarah Ferguson, the Duchess of York, referred to him as Meaty. Uh, <laughs> Gorgeous, beautiful color. Yeah, it is. I do. I do like this color. But you know, I, I like brunettes, which is one of the reasons I married Heather. Heather. I love you, dude. Exactly. I think a full wig is a lot easier. Very true. Very true. But some people, some people don't like the full wigs. They want to. Incorporate. That's the word. I'm and honestly, for. toppers are easier for updos. They're just ways oh, yeah. for updos. 
Well, I don't think about up dudes because I'm a guy. But then again, you know, man buns and all that sort of thing, I suppose. Love the one with Bud Kelly and the doorbell. Kelly, spell off, lol. Oh. That, that's the thing about... Um, that's the thing about Married with Children. It was a lot more clever than many of the critics would admit. It was really clever in, in places. And people were some people just focused on the crude stuff and ignored the clever stuff. You get a lot of that with, uh, with comedy. People overlooking the really important stuff and just focusing on the crude stuff. And I, I find that terrible. It's like with uh, Beavis and Butthead, that was a fantastic satire on modern teenagers. Well, modern teenagers back in the 1990s. And um, they, they, they failed to realize that. But when you get Office Space written by the same guy who did Beavis and Butthead, it's sublime. It's just fantastic. It's one of the best films ever written and Heather is laughing in agreement. Um, how is the coverage in the back, says Kathleen? Okay, I'll do... Ah! Here, I'll take myself off <laughs> camera the, so you can see. On the catwalk. On the catwalk, baby, on the catwalk. <sighs> Sit up straight, honey, so they can actually see the the bottom of it. Maybe. Yeah. Actually, can you push the chair forward a little bit? That answer your question, I hope, Kathleen. No, I push the push the chair There's back a little bit, up. honey. Put put the chair so, back so they can, can actually see the back of it because it it was oh, chair more, back. Okay, it was right. longer you were showing it. Sorry, I didn't have I didn't have my earpiece in. Right here we go. There we go. That looks, that looks good. Earpiece in. Okay. There we go. Right. Where are we here? Da, 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 da. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. These are regular synthetic fibers, right? Are these are these regular synthetic or heat friendly? They're premium heat friendly. Premium I went, heat friendly. I went with heat friendly for all the toppers because it's less shiny. It's going to integrate with hair a little bit more naturally than than regular synthetic, um, and it's a really good heat friendly fiber. All I think right. I'm going to give up on trying to tie dye these because I did this one, and that doesn't yeah. look particularly tie dyed to me. It just looks. Like it's splotchy different flash. colors. And then I tried it on this one. And again, it's just splotchy. I don't think it's working. John couldn't get it show to work. Them my, can I show them yes, my sublime yes, work? Yes, yes, do, do that. Both these cameras are live. So yeah, yeah get it get a little closer. It's polka dotted. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think this is, I mean, it's- I, I failed. It's got that the box. It does not work as advertised. <laughs> no, um, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll just, experiment with it now might as well have fun i'm gonna dip them maybe that's gonna, something gonna write a sternly written letter to the that's right man yes well, i wish to complain most strongly about your easter egg dying kit it does not work as advertised yours sincerely brigadier lethbridge stewart mrs <laughs> monty python gag there by the way for any folks who are in the know um i'd be interested in the back coverage too kelly let me know hi yeah. kelly by the way let me know yeah. if uh if, if uh you need any more footage of the back okay uh tina says i like 18 imbro 18 inch ambrose in that color good stuff thank you very much um uh, yeah heat friendly as uh, as heather mentioned um or for those of us who were born in the 60s and grew up in the 70s yeah. Yeah. well i'm almost there born in the 70s grew up in the 80s yeah. Um, that Raquel Welch color is the only dimensional one from them that I can wear and appreciate having less red and more ash. Definitely love that color. I feel the exact same way about that color. I love it. And you know me, I like auburns too, but when I wear reds, I want to wear reds. And I like 630 blends and 633 blends and 433 blends. Um, but I don't really like it when it's got that much auburn in the front because that's, that's where you're taking all your selfies and stuff. So people will think the whole thing is red and you know, so 
I, I wanted to avoid that. I wanted it to be like chestnutty, mm -hmm. and his natural color is actually more auburn than than this topper color is. But uh, I also wanted that little bit of ash in there. Yeah, you see all you see all this gray in the beard here. That used to be red when I was younger. Ah, uh, do you have pictures? I would love to see that someday. I I, I do have pictures, but they're all back in England. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, Cheryl says, thanks for making colors that most of us can wear. <laughs> You're welcome. And you look beautiful, Moonlit Orchid. Yes. Is that what that is? It looks great. That, that works really well for you, yeah. Gotta love that lavender color. And Penny, hi, Penny, says, oi, so Nigel's first real American job is hair model. Well, <laughs> no, not really, because, I mean, my first real American job I had ages ago when I had my first green card long 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 story but a long uh, my, long time ago yeah my first real american job was um caterer well a catering waiter at uh holy trinity greek orthodox church in canton ohio uh but um uh my first real job in this uh iteration of the green card yeah is um is topper model so yeah and Mazel tov. Thank you, Penny. Exciting news about the voiceovers. In a world where nothing is as it seems, one man, etc. Congrats. Is there a one in, one out rule? Because I don't know what that means. Sorry, you, you might have to be a bit, bit more specific about that. Do it. That is so cool. I've told my kids I always wanted to be a voiceover actor. Your voice would be awesome. Autobots transform and roll out. No, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'll leave that to Peter Cullen. There are other people who do Peter Cullen voices better than I. Uh, but fun fact, Peter Cullen voiced Eeyore and the Predator, as well as Optimus Prime. I do know my voiceover stuff. Uh, where are we here? And Liz says definitely toppers are better for making ponytails. In fact, agreed. Here, let me turn off the. Boop. There we go. I dropped it. Stop. I dropped my ponytail thing. I'll try later. Well, make sure when you're gathering it, you want to gather it kind of gently from the front first because the hairline needs to be trained still. It's a brand new hairline. Anybody who's owned monofilament wigs knows they take a little while to kind of relax at that base where they pivot, where the knot is tied. So it's going to be really stiff when you try to style the front. So you're going to end up with a big bulge here is what I'm saying. If you don't, start up here and then gently coax the rest into it. And my hair is not going to smell like vinegar. Great. Whatever. I lost my scrunchie. Clean. Oh. It's a moot point anyway, because I lost my scrunchie. I don't know where the hell it goes. <laughs> that sounds like a meme that needs to happen. A man saying he lost his scrunchie. I lost my scrunchie. Ursula, I found your scrunchie. Sorry, this is a, anyone who's ever watched the um, Disney version, the Disney movie version of George of the Jungle. Ursula, I found your scrunchie. We'll know what I'm talking about. I need some dark shades. Damn right. By the way, we're- Shauna, hi, Shauna. Just popping in. Hi, Shauna, glad you hi. could drop by. Hello, Shauna. I've given up on trying to tie-dye the eggs and now I'm just dying, dying them. So we yeah. will have a nice assortment, whatever. I'll take a mm -hmm. picture, we'll put it on the community tab when they're done. Right now, I just feel like I've made a mess, but it was fun. Um, again, remember, if you would like to see a tutorial video that you know Nigel will show you how to customize the front hairline a little bit, uh, let us know in the comments of the replay of this video. Um, and I also want to let you know about a couple things going on over at Hair Kitty Kitty before we uh, dip out. I made this little video. Hopefully it'll play. We play. Oh, please play. This happened last time. Or it didn't want to play. Well, it's a video that's going to show what happens. You gonna show me? It's being. I should have used a PNG file. I knew it. Technical difficulties. I know. I'm pressing play on my nose. It's just not going there. All right. Let me see if I. You guys know I'm using Canva, so I don't care if I use it in this mode. Will it show me? There we go. 
It's a coupon with music. It was going to be cute. <laughs> but the point of it is, is that um, the wig of the week is Charisma in Chocolate Icing R, which is a really, 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 really nice blend. I'm going to go back into presentation mode so you can really see the coupon code in a little bit. It hit it. There we go. Whoa! Yay! Now you can see that it has this coupon code. There it is. Screen grab it. Love it. Live it. I think this is also an Instagram. But uh, we're running a sale 45% off. That's 45% off at Hair Kitty Kitty. We've also got a 35% off sale that is not just on one style. It's anything that's in the collection for Aries. So if you are an Aries, happy birthday or happy belated birthday, which is probably more likely the case at this point. But for a few more days, we will be offering 35% off anything that we recommend for Aries. And then, of course, it'll be Taurus's turn next. So if you are a Taurus, keep an eye on that. And I'm going to go ahead and flip through the Patreon roll. If there's anything else you want to say, honey, before I'm done talking about Patreon. Remember the deal I mentioned? Well, if, you, if you want to do the Patreon stuff now, do that now, and I'll, I'll add on afterwards, okay? Okay. So, um, I'm as I mentioned earlier, we're running a bit of a special, and it's kind of a humdinger of a deal. As I mentioned, I bought a ton of equipment to kind of up our game a little bit. I mean, I'm not really gonna make a ton of videos, but I want them to really have a lot in them um, when I make them. So um, I bought a new, well, a refurbished iMac. I bought two phones so I could compare them. I bought a, a Google Pixel 6 Pro, um, and I bought a um, iPhone 13 Max Pro or Pro Max. Um, the green one that's been in all the ads, I have one of those now. So um, I, I wanna compare what they look like. So anyway, I digress. If you sign up um, at the $50 level or above, um, we will send you a free wig for every full month that you are um, involved. And that isn't starting, you know, we're not counting 30 days from when you start. I'm, I'm making this as easy on myself as possible. So we're, we're starting it at the beginning of each month. So, um, but just so you know, that is something going on right now. And when I'm done paying off all that equipment, we, we will probably discontinue that particular um, incentive. But, you know, it doesn't, there's no limitation. You can get, you know, this topper that Nigel is demonstrating. You can get, um, if it's in stock, you can get any of the wigs like this one that I'm wearing in Tahitian Sunset. So it, it's a pretty good deal. All of them are more expensive than $50. <laughs> so there's that. And here are the folks that took me up on this offer, and I want to say special thanks to them. So thank you, everybody, who is helping me invest in that equipment. And as I also mentioned at the beginning, literally none of this is going towards the tummy tuck. It's all going towards the equipment, which is why I wanted to show you that I actually committed to buying the equipment up front. Uh, and then let's see. There's everybody else. Yay! So thank you so much for watching. This one's been a lot of fun, I think. Um, it's yeah, been yeah. really, really cool to um, just kind of play around, you know, and, and goof around with the eggs. It's been fun to have John here. You want to say anything, John? Hold on. He's got, coming back over. I'll get you on camera here. All right. Don't just get the eggs. Hold on. Boop, boop. I got yeah. it. There you go. You want to say bye? Uh, okay, so I missed this one before, but about Nigel being cute, literally every single one of our <laughs> common female friends is apparently jealous of how nice Nigel is. He's the best. Every single one. He's amazing. Like, he's not putting on a show for these live streams. This is how he actually is. So I wanted to take a moment and show you that he's sleeping on the couch just so he can be in the same room with me and make sure I'm okay. Like... Now the room, our bedroom is on the other side of the living room wall. It's not that far, but uh, it does it does mean a lot. So, anything else you want to say, John? Nope. All right, all right. Well, bye, everybody. Thank you for well, coming. Hang on. I've got a couple more things I wanted to talk about. Okay, never mind. <laughs> okay, all right. Let's see here. Um, where are we here? Okay. False alarm. Yeah, no, that's okay. Kathleen from Beauty Within says, I tried that before for the tie-dyed eggs. Failed. 
got all my kids to do eggs last night, teens and adults, though it is cool, still will do them. Yeah, does not work as advertised. Yeah, I'm not I'm not seeing much success either. I gave up. <laughs> Lessons you learn from watching summer school on HBO with Mark Harmon. Ah, the 80s. Yeah, the 80s. Ah, uh, huge, huge, huge um, 80s retrogasm uh, nostalgia thing going on right now, which is why you can see up here there's a, a scare glow action figure from the original He-Man line that I've that has been recently made remade in 2021 that I bought for a, a, a Halloween decoration because he glows in the dark as a skeleton. But yeah, 1980s the retro nostalgiagasm, it's still going strong. Ah, yes. Okay. And Shauna says, oh, yay, so congrats. Thank you very much indeed, Shauna. Much appreciated. Shelly says, you can use hair dye to cover the gray and make it all burn again. That's okay. I don't mind. It, it makes me look distinguished or something like that. Besides, if I'm going to contact an agent in Atlanta and try to get the role of King Randor in the speak, going back to the 1980s nostalgiagasm, uh, live action He-Man stuff, then... Uh, I want to look a bit, you know, I should put more dye on it. older than uh, than that. And Cheryl says, this is rose blush rooted. Oh, nice. Well, see, there you go. That, that's one example of how my monitor and the lighting kind of changed how the color presented. It looks a little cooler. Yeah. Um, but that, that also shows how versatile the rose blush is, because depending on the lighting, it can go cooler. So, yeah, lighting also, and Individual monitors do do uh, make a difference because we we often receive a lot of comments and emails from people saying, "Oh, this this whatever it was doesn't look like it shows on your uh, camera or whatever." And yeah, sometimes it's your monitor, sometimes it's your camera, sometimes it's your screen. Yeah, and, so, and sometimes it's the lighting on whoever's side is taking the photos too. Because I mean, it, yeah. it can go both ways. Sometimes it's our lighting, so you never know. But uh, yeah, green card success, yes, great, great success. Thank you. And excellent, looks like good coverage. Good, glad you could see that. And Tina says, love the coupon. So thank you, Heather, for that marvelous coupon. <laughs> um, let's see, is Willow coming back? I want all the colors that presents as gray. Well, that's something we have to think about. I'll leave Heather to answer that. Yeah, right Right now we're kind of, um, in, in terms of um, the business end, I've literally been working with John to kind of restructure some things and we're still trying to figure out what kind of budget we want to throw at refills, uh, particularly in the fall, because uh, frankly, we have a ton of hair. We still need to sell. <laughs> So I'm going to prioritize selling the stuff we've got on hand before we start ordering a lot of refills. But one thing I will recommend is that on the HairKittyKitty.com website, uh, I worked with a developer to create a really nice form that is on each of the sold out products. And if you fill out that form, what it does is it fleshes out a database for me that tells me who wants what and who, who would like me to make another um, refill of something. It's absolutely free to sign up to it. And all you have to do is put in your email address um, to confirm, you know, so we, we can send you an email if we refill it. But put that stuff um, in the form. So make sure you fill out the forms. Again, there's literally, it's like a vote that you don't have to pay for. It's completely free. You just go fill out the form and it tells me uh, at the end of each month what people are really interested in. Um, and I feel, I feel like the number one thing, because I checked last night, was Beckett and Beach House rooted. People really want Beckett and they're asking for it. So, and that's really interesting information for me because at first I thought it was Leighton and Queen of the Night and Willow and Coco Swirl R. And in fact, we have more requests right now for uh, Willow in Beach House R than we do for Coco Swirl R. So that just goes to show how important those forms are. And I'm really, now that they're um, in place, which is something that took about a month and a half to get together, um, we finally got it all uh, functioning properly. That happened right before I went into surgery. So that would have been like two, three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So it's it's brand new. Make sure you go fill that out. That, that goes for everybody here and tell a friend too, because again, they don't have to buy anything. They just have to show me what they're interested in. That will help me figure out what the heck 
to spend the very limited budget that I'm willing to throw at refills for the fall, it tells me what to prioritize. Okay. Uh, Kathleen over at Beauty From Within says, thank you for all the work you do for all the live streams. Thank you very Thank much, you. Indeed, Kathleen. Much appreciated. And Nigel's been doing the bulk of it lately, so he's mm -hmm. he's he's been wonderful, and he gets better every week. Really. <laughs> Liz says this was so much fun, guys. Can't wait for the next one. Well, it's interesting you say that, Liz, because next week is St George's Day, which is the big patron saint of England celebration, and I think we're going to use an idea that you yourself ha -ha. suggested. Yeah, so next week is on you, Liz. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Serene says, hi, John. Hey, uh -huh. Serene. Did you hear that? Yeah, 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 we heard that. Kathleen says, great job, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen, for being such a great supporter. Liz says, bye, John. Bye. <laughs> John says, I did, but Patreon has messed up my $50 tier. Yes, I've heard about that. Were you able to contact them? Because there's there's no way, and it's kind of a good thing that there's like literally no way for people who have a Patreon to yeah, we We that. cannot mess with that whatsoever. It's it's a protection method for the people who sign up for Patreon that we it's, can't personally yeah. mess with that. It's kind of a good thing, you know, yeah. if you think about that, but it also means that there's not a lot we can do for you, but they might be able to fix it on their end if you contact their support. Yeah, yeah. So contract, contact the Patreon people uh, directly because there's nothing we can do about it, which is a definite protection method for Patreons, Patreon patrons. Yes. Um, let's see. Um, Serena says, thanks, everyone. Thank you, Serene. Um, Cheryl says, I've been on the $50 tier since the beginning, but cannot get Patreon to show the correct one. Yeah, uh, definitely going to have to get them to sort that out. Yeah, um, not not only that, but if you want to, um, if you could email receipts or something like that, that, you know, if it shows that you've been paying that amount, if you could show me that, then if I talk to them on your behalf, I'm, I'm not going to go back to work right away, just so you know, I'm, I'm taking, you know, a little bit more time off. But once once I come back, I can um, take a look at that, or John could even take a look at that. I mean, because that's just a matter of contacting Patreon and saying, hey, this person has these receipts. This isn't working. What can we do, right? Um, but if you could send that to support at uh, hairkittykitty.com, that would be great. And then just like attention, Heather and John, and we'll be able to help out with that. I do not have a banner for that, I'm afraid. Yeah, but at support at hairkittykitty.com. And the thing is, like, if if you can't find it in your receipts and it looks like it's been the $15 tier the whole time, then that will tell the story. And then you'll have to go to them directly. But I might be able to, like, prod them a little bit and get the party started. Um, I can only follow their instructions. That didn't work so well. I will look for their support address. Okay, yeah, just let us know how it goes. And, um, you know, we'll... We'll, we'll try to do what we can if you need help, but we can't we can't do much to fix it on our end. No, no. Right, let's finish up these. Let's get caught up with these comments. And, uh, yeah, because I need to go sit on my heat pad a little bit. Right, 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 right. Which says, uh, let's see. Uh, great time with you all this evening. Thank you very much, Barbara. Thanks for dropping by. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, Shelly says, feel better soon, Heather. Hope you heal Thank up you. quickly. Thank you. Serene says, Beckett is a really pretty wig. I definitely like it on on her a lot better than on me <laughs> there we go uh thanks heather we'll fill out the form thank you barbara uh let's see what about requesting a style and a color that hasn't been manufactured well for that uh where is it dum, 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 dum. get up here there we go please direct all stock and product inquiries to support at sisterwigs.com. Thank you. You can su make suggestions there and we'll keep track of those. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And also like if it's one of those situations where uh, like, because you are also a content creator, like if you are interested in, um, you know, investing in a run, let us know. Like, as in, if you want to sell some, we could, we could sell some to you wholesale, like at cost. And um, you're welcome to buy some inventory that way if you want to accelerate the process. It, it all just depends. Um, we have very limited funds to work with this stuff because we're slowly discontinuing some of the brands we work with, which is something that you've probably seen on the website um, at Sister Wigs. And so we're taking a little bit of a deliberate hit there, but it's because we want to um, kind of consolidate our resources so we can really concentrate on our own stuff. Mm -hmm. 
and it's it's kind of a long process <laughs> and it it does cost us money to do it and um you know, so we're interested in your ideas and we definitely want to hear them. Uh, I think that one of the better places to put it even more so than sending us an email is literally in the comments on the replay. If other people comment on that and vote on it and say that they really like it too, that tells us a lot, um, which is why I like it when people say this stuff in the public comments on live streams and stuff like that. Cause I would really love to encourage people to have a conversation about things just like this. Like, there are so many great ideas that you guys have. In fact, a lot of mm -hmm. the stuff we make is based on your feedback specifically. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. And I, I want to make sure that, um, you know, this is something that we can have as a public conversation. So everyone feels encouraged to want to add their feedback. So the way to get that started is to just comment. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's get through the rest of these here. Um... Serene says it's Hammy's birthday tomorrow, and he's asking me to wish you all a very happy oh, Easter. Oh, Hammy, Hammy's so cute. For those of you who celebrate, and for those of you who don't have a slice of birthday cake, thank you, Serene, and happy birthday, Hammy. Yes. Have a good one. I, I hope you get lots of scritches. <laughs> okay. Cheryl says I've sent my receipts to you. I will send the receipts again. It, now, as, as we we're saying, it's better if you send them to the patreon people directly because like i said like we said we don't well, we, we, we could take a look at it too though i mean it well, doesn't hurt look at it but we can't do yeah. anything about it um like we can't adjust it ourselves but we can yeah. at least ask their help desk what the heck's going on yeah cindy says good night good night but we're not done quite yet sarah says good night and thanks we're almost there thank oh you oh my god nigel well, we've got just a couple more things I want to cover. All right, well, uh, I need, I'm, I just had surgery. We'll I need get to get there. The we'll, get there. we'll get there. Thank you, Helen. Greatly appreciated. And uh, glad you are building your brand. Thank you, Cheryl. Greatly Thank you. Now, um, as for that, let me just see what else we've got here. Um, yeah, I think that about covers it. Okay, so. I <laughs> But I just want to make sure we got got to everyone and everything we want to talk about tonight. Okay. <laughs> All right. So again, thank you, folks, for joining us. We just passed the two hour mark. Thank you so much for joining us uh, on this. Uh, we've got some more stuff uh, that we'll be uh, talking about next week. And thanks to Liz Lyons, who has suggested a while back uh, the suggestion for uh, next week's topic and it's going to be a fun one it's going to be an interesting one i hope cross fingers <laughs> yes and remember charisma in chocolate icing r is currently 45 percent off at herakittykitty.com uh, we have free returns for people in the us and we have international shipping there and then also we have 35 percent off aries um, if you are an aries or not you just kind of like the hair we recommend for them Check it out. Oh, we, and we're really careful, by the way. We're very careful when we put uh, wigs in the collections based on their uh, astrology sign. We don't want to just be like, okay, so you're an Aries, right? So that means you like red and yellow and orange. You guys have more depth than that. So what I do is I kind of think about, you know, the personality type that that sign is described as, you know, and then I try to think about what, what would that kind of person wear? Right? What would that person wear? And then, boom, that's what we put in that collection. So we put a lot of thought into it. Oh, yeah. Okay, I think that about covers it. And um, we'll, we hope to see you next week. Huh? Okay, this time it's for real. Bye, everybody. Bye. -bye.